effect. You're not going to meet your B12 RDA from consuming soil and or water unless you consume an absurd amount. And speaking more broadly, the notion that prior to technology we were getting our B12 herbivorously seems extremely implausible. As far as I can tell, that's just some kind of weird like vegan myth that's been generated out of an ideological commitment to the notion that humans are herbivores, which ironically is not something you have to believe in order to make good arguments for veganism, but whatever. Now, the vegans who want to defend this idea that we were meeting our B12 RDA pre-technology from non-animal sources usually propose three means by which we would have done this. Uh, soil, water, and shit. Okay, so here are some calculations that show the problems with those proposed means of getting B12. So the B12 RDA is 2.4 micrograms. Uh, the B12 concentration in soil, this is a highball, keep in mind, is 0.014 micrograms per gram. So if we divide the RDA by the soil concentration, we get 171.4 grams. Remember, that's with the highball. So if you think you're eating, you know, basically a quarter pound of dirt a day, <laughs> then maybe that's possible. Uh, so with water, similar thing, uh, the concentration, this is a highball, and there's also a super highball I'm gonna give after, because it's its own thing. The highball is about 0.005, uh, micrograms per liter. So divide the RDA by 0 0.005 micrograms per liter, we get 480 liters. You think you're drinking 480 liters of water a day? That's more than a bathtub. A standard bathtub is like 300 liters. Now there's also the shit means of getting B12. I call this the all people no cup hypothesis because it's kind of like two girls one cup except it's all people and there's no cup because it was pre-technology. So, the B12 concentration in shit, these are all highballs, uh, is 0 0.018 micrograms per gram. So again, just divide the RDA by that and we're gonna get 131.9 grams of shit. That's basically a quarter pound of shit. You <laughs> know what a quarter pounder burger is? Well, <laughs> you know, eat one of those of shit and you'll get your B12 RDA from shit, okay? Now, there's also a super highball with the water that has to be addressed. So the super highball for water is to focus on specific water sources that have a specific species of euglena living in them. This euglena elevates the water's B12 concentration. Sometimes the concentration is as high as two micrograms per liter, which if you divide the B12 RDA of 2.4 micrograms by that two micrograms per liter, you're gonna get 1.2 liters, which is certainly drinkable. So couldn't this be a reliable way for us to have met our B12 RDA pre-technology on a vegan diet? Well, there's a few problems with that. So firstly, if you look at the B12 concentration over time, you can see that it's highest when the euglena is blooming. And in fact, for the majority of the year, you would not be able to meet your B12 RDA drinking any kind of reasonable amount of this water. Now. Granted, it's not over a bathtub, like with most water sources, this super cherry-picked water, you're only looking at, you know, 12 liters a day, 24 liters a day, <laughs> nothing that crazy. So here's what we'd have to assume to make the euglena hypothesis work. We'd have to assume that this specific species of euglena existed in Africa during our evolutionary history. We'd have to assume, and this goes for the soil and water examples from before as well, that the B12 we're measuring in the euglena water isn't composed to any meaningful degree by pseudo B12, which doesn't contribute towards our RDA and in fact impairs the absorption of normal B12, we'd have to assume that somehow we were able to isolate the specific water sources containing this specific species of euglena and harvest from them during the specific times when the B12 concentration is sufficiently elevated then store that water and consume the requisite minimum amount throughout the rest of the year, all without the aid of technology. Now, if you think that that's plausible, I would love to hear how. I guess I should talk about duckweed for a second. It's a lot less common to hear duckweed put forward than soil or water or shit as a means by which we got our B12 RDA from vegan sources prior to technology, but it does still sometimes come up, so I'll deal with it quickly. There are two species of duckweed that have been shown to have high enough B12 concentrations that we'd be able to get 
our RDA from them without having to consume an absurd amount. These are Wolfia globosa and Lemna minor. Really, we don't know that the Lemna minor has this high a B12 level. It's only ever been tested in a mixed batch with a strain of Wolfia globosa, so we don't really know what's accounting for what there in terms of B12. But whatever, we're just going to assume they both have this kind of high B12 level because that gives the other side the stronger argument. So the problem with this hypothesis is that both of these species of duckweed are scant in Africa, and even if we give a huge steel man and assume that all duckweeds have the same B12 concentration as these particular duckweeds, if we look at the duckweed distribution in Africa, there's no reason to believe this distribution is concentrated enough that a nomadic species could reliably find a duckweed pond to sustain their B12 RDA. And in case there's any confusion, those dots are not to scale. It's not as if there's these huge chunks of Africa that are covered in duckweed. Those are actually just points. They're blown up so you can see them. I'll also point out that these calculations came from Dr. Avi. He's a vegan MD, but he has no problem at all going after the sacred cows of veganism, right? He just cares about what's true and he's happy to shit on vegans or make them realize they're talking about eating quarter pounders of shit when they're saying something silly. So maybe you should talk to someone who does understand the health science, who takes a vegan position, and who's not got some kind of insane ideological bias, who has clearly demonstrated their willingness to criticize, you know, vegan bullshit. 